Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe we receive right now our fresh living word from heaven. Father, I thank you that this word is alive and powerful, that you give us exactly what you would have us to hear and to receive. And Father, I thank you that your spirit is upon me because you have anointed me. And the word, the anointing, breaks every yoke and removes every burden. And Father, I thank you for every person that they have a listening ear, they have a focused mind, a listening ear, and a receptive heart in Jesus' name. And now let's confess the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. He is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. He said, I will work and no man can turn it back. And now let's acknowledge our reception of the Word of God. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much that you opened my ears to hear as the learned. That just like you said to Peter, that flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Father, I thank you that you give each one of us revelation knowledge today. Thank you, Father, that I have revelation knowledge right now of these, this word that will go forth. And Father, that this word will accomplish in me, through me, and for me what it is sent to do in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit has been teaching us on our great redemption that God prepared for every person. And now that you're born again, then we have the unsearchable riches of Christ and we have our full redemption, but the Lord is showing us what it is so that we can believe it and confess it and receive it and walk in it and experience it. That's his will for every one of us. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So redemption has taken place. Jesus purchased us with his own blood on the cross. And so our redemption is a settled fact. The blessing of Abraham is a settled fact because God spoke to Abram and he said, and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. So that is the gospel. Now, what our part is, is to know what it is, to believe it, and to confess it. So let's go back over to Deuteronomy 28 because the Holy Spirit has been taking us verse by verse and showing us what we're redeemed from and then what we have been redeemed into, or in other words, what the blessing is. And remember in Deuteronomy 30, God himself said, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, you choose. And he said, the way you choose, what, what saith it? The word is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. So let's just say this right now. Father, in Jesus name, I choose the blessing. Father, in Jesus' name, I choose the blessing. And Father, I thank you that I'm redeemed from the whole curse. That none of the curse is on me, can pursue after me, or can overtake me through Jesus Christ. So let's look at verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter you among all people from one end of the earth even to the other. And there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, even wood and stone. So the curse here is that you and your family would be scattered among all people from one end of the earth to the other. Well, good news. You have been redeemed from being scattered from one end of the earth to the other. And you can claim that for your family. 
I claimed it for my family. I said, Father, I'm redeemed from my children being scattered throughout the earth. I believe that my family lives close to me and they all live within an hour. So you can acknowledge that. And so here is the, um, are the blessings, the promises. Deuteronomy 30, verse 3, that then the Lord your God will turn your captivity and have compassion on you and will return and gather you from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. So he said that he would gather you. So rather than being scattered, your family will be gathered. You will be gathered together. And in that verse also, he said that the Lord will turn your captivity. Well, Jesus turned our captivity on the cross. Our captivity has been turned. We have been released from Satan's domain, from his dominion, from his bondage. And so our captivity has already been turned. We are free now. And therefore, we can claim this promise that he gathers us. That he gathers us from all nations. In Isaiah 43, verse 5 and 6, Fear not, for I am with you. Listen to this. I will bring your seed from the east and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. So either you or maybe you know someone that is believing God for your children to come home, for God to bring them back. Here's your verses that God said he would bring your seed from the east and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Around the first of the year, actually on January the 8th, and you might want to go and look at this message that Pastor Mark gave to us at the first of this year. It was... Um, January the 8th, and the message that the Lord gave him was that I'm calling your children home, that I am turning the hearts of the children back to the Father God and back to their parents and the hearts of the fathers back to the children. And in that message, he gave a prophecy. He said that uh, I see there are some children on the West Coast that are far from us. Well, we live in Alabama, so that, he says, like far away, all the way to the, to the coast. He said, um, maybe California, maybe some of the other states. And he said, I am right now in their bedroom, speaking in their ear, go home. Well, we had a family that heard that, and their daughter, lived in Washington, the state of Washington, and she called the next day and said, I'm coming home. So you can mix faith with these promises that God is bringing your children back. And in Isaiah 54, verse 7, For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee, and the moment that uh, he said that for a small moment, well, have I forsaken thee? That was when Jesus was on the cross and he was forsaken. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So that we will never be forsaken. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you because that curse was placed on Jesus. We are redeemed from being forsaken. He said, but with great mercies will I gather you, and he will gather you to himself. That's the heart of the Father, just to gather you in. He said, how often would I have gathered you as a, I believe he said, as a mother hen gathers her chicks under their wings. He said, but you would not. And I, this is my answer to that. I would, I will let you gather me under the shelter of your wings. So let's just say that together. Father, I let you gather me 
under your wings where it is safe, where I have clear direction, where you are my protection. And then, uh, I don't think I gave you the, yeah. Isaiah 60 verse four, lift up your eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. That is a good promise that your sons shall come from far and your daughters will be nursed at your side and they will be nursed on the good word of God. As you, uh, are able to impart into them the things of God. And then Zechariah 10, verse 7 and 8, And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as through wine. Yes, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. I will hiss for them and gather them. He's talking about hissing for the children and gathering them. For I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. So he said, I will hiss for them, and I will gather them. So that's a promise for you to mix faith with, that God hisses for your children, or maybe it's some other member of the family, and I will gather them. God is a gatherer. He gathers the people. He gathers them to himself. He gathers us to himself, praise God. So rather than the curse of being scattered, we have the blessing of being gathered. He gathers us and he gathers our children and he's all about family. He gathers our family together, praise God. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for this good word. Thank God for our redemption. Thank God for our redeemer, Jesus.